Yeah. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM, may be recorded by other local media. Do I have a motion? There's, there's no motion. There's no motion to call the meeting in order. No, you'll get it. You All did. Right, perfect. Then let's yeah. get up and do the, uh, the pledge. Yeah. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. While we wait for Mrs. Magner to come, we're, we're going to skip to uh, new legal bills and the uh, town administrator's report. Sorry, Rich, I know that skips over a bunch of stuff. Is that right? Okay. Uh, Vice Chair, I move to approve legal bills for September 2022 in the amount of $5,578.48. As yes. follows General, $4,003.48. Labor, $1,575 for that total. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner. Second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Gilberto. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, just gonna look back to NORCAM. Can you hear us okay back there? All right. Can you guys hear me? Can you? Oh, that's for NORCAM. Oh, so we just have to speak loud. I can speak louder. So we'll need to project, is that what we're being told? And I'll just look if anybody's got their camera on uh, at home on Zoom, can you hear us okay? Just a thumbs up will do. Yeah, yeah. Great, excellent. Who? That's gonna be great later. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so we move to the town administrator's report. Just uh, two items that I'm going to share with uh, folks who are here this evening or at home. Um, the first is uh, we, are, we had delayed the implementation of uh, pay as you throw program to begin uh, today with uh, Monday's trash collection. And so for those of you who don't know what that means is as we've discussed at numerous meetings over the past year or so, any of the volume that you have for trash above and beyond two 50 gallon barrels uh, requires a special pay, uh, pay as you throw bag, which is available for purchase at uh, locations here in town, uh, most notably Ryers right down the street here. Um, the convenience store is a supermarket uh, stop and shop as well. Uh, there'll be a listing of uh, uh, locations posted on the town website if it's not already up there. Uh, this is a soft rollout for this program. So what that means is if you have an item that's curbside right now this week for your collection, uh, we'll, we'll collect it. You know, meaning if there's an extra bag, but we'll leave a sticker on your barrel just letting you know that we have a, uh, a new program that's in place and we anticipate um, more stri uh, strict enforcement of the pay-as-you-throw program beginning with next week's collection so uh, we ask your compliance if you're not able to comply this week we understand we've spoken with republic um, and they are certainly on the same page with us as well um, and if there are any issues i see mr pachara is here you can call the uh, department of public works at 978-357-5260 that familiar voice uh, voice yes. uh, amy A very familiar and patient voice <laughs> Uh, the second thing I will just note, because I have received inquiry from residents, is uh, with regard to um, the trash bill and trash billing. And we have a trash bill, uh, along with a water bill, that will be going out in the coming days and that will hit residents' uh, mailboxes uh, in the next week or so, I believe, maybe a little bit further out. Um, we are uh, entering into discussions with Republic with regard to a potential credit for um, the missed and delayed collections that occurred at the beginning of October. Um, and it is our intention to pass along a credit at a future bill and on a future bill, uh, but we do not uh, anticipate that that will occur for this current bill. So uh, when folks see their bill in the mail, <coughs> understand that there isn't a credit on there, but we have certainly heard your concerns and share the frustration. And uh, should we be able to acquire a credit, which I'm optimistic we will be able to, we will pass it uh, along uh, through in billing uh, at the next quarterly bill. That, that is our intention. And that concludes my comments for the TA's report this evening. Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you want to go to the appointments for the Veterans Events yes. Committee. I don't have my... Oh. The motion should be just yeah, past the norm. Oh, I got them here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Do we have a motion? Sorry, are you ready for me? Yes. Okay. Um, 
So, Vice Chair, I move to place the nomination of the following names for appointment and or reappointment as members of the Veterans Event Committee for Terms to Expire. Richard Stratton, December 31, 2025. Michelle Reed, December 31, 2024. Dan Mahoney, December 31, 2024. Arthur Cole, December 31, 2023. Motion by? No. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Any discussion and liaison? Um, yep, that's me. Um, so these are all members already that have been there that are being reappointed, except for Michelle Reed, who's been an associate member and has asked to step up. There was a spot open for a full member and she was happy to take it. So she will be becoming a full member um, and we're happy to have her. Happy to have everybody back. Yeah. So, <clears throat> roll call. Yep. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Richard Stratton, Michelle Reed, Dan Mahoney, Arthur Cole. Mr. O'Leary. I'm excusing Mr. Walker. <laughs> Richard Stratton, Michelle Reed, Dan Mahoney, Arthur Cole. Mr. Gonzalez. Richard Stratton, Michelle Reed, Dan Mahoney, Arthur Cole. And Mr. Studo is Richard Stratton, Michelle Reed, Dan Mahoney, Arthur Cole. Um, There's a second motion, I believe, relative to the membership for the associate member. Mr. Waller, do we have a Vice motion? Chair? Yep. Vice Chair, I move to place in nomination the following name for appointment as an associate member of the Veterans Event Committee for a term to expire as follows. Deborah Aldrich, December 31, 2025. Second. Motion by Mr. O'Leary, second by Mr. <clears throat> uh, motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Um, as liaison, um, we're happy to keep Debbie Altridge. She's already been on the committee and we're happy to continue to have her. Okay. Mr. O'Leary? Yep, well said. Deborah Aldridge. Mr. Walner? Deborah Aldridge. Ms. Gonzalez? Deborah Aldridge. And Mr. Studo, Deborah Aldridge. Two minutes. I don't know if you want to go to the presentation and then we can go to discussion after. You want to do the minutes? Give her one more minute. Um, this, so that we didn't prepare a motion. We just want to let the board members know with regard to the minutes. There is an extensive share file folder. I'm sure. I know. So I've been seeing some of you have been able to review <coughs> some of the minutes. Um, there probably are at least more than a dozen sets that are in there for folks to review. And our intention would be to bring them to the next select board meeting on November 21st okay. for a meeting to approve. So if you have any changes, um, Jen, uh, Ms. McNeil, you'd like them to email you directly, right, with regard to that, and we can uh, incorporate the change. Is that right? Okay, great. Okay. Excellent. So we're going to skip the proclamation and wait for Ms. Magna. We're going to go to the tonight's wastewater uh, update. <coughs> uh, Mr. Parisi. Good evening. So uh, I'd like to give the uh, select board and um, the audience a little bit of an update on the wastewater system plan <coughs> design. Mr. Parisi, just one second. Do we need to share the screen in order for it to go through on the Zoom? Okay. Okay, so we'll. Yeah, do that. Yeah, I think I need to. Oh, I think. So it's not it's escaping. Sure you know how to get the share? Mr. Chairman, if we could maybe take the proclamation and then go to Mr. Yeah. Okay, we're going to back up. Just <laughs> I don't want to keep people here longer than they have to. So, thank you for coming. Um, so we're going to move on to the uh, veterans proclamation for the town of North Reading. Okay. <clears throat> there is a motion. Okay, Vice Chair, I move to proclaim proclaim Friday, November 11th, 2022, as Veterans Day in North Reading and to read the attached proclamation. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> so the Town of North Riding Veterans Day 2022 proclamation. 
Whereas we gather here as Americans and citizens of North Reading to pay tribute and express our thanks and appreciation to our brave and selfless veterans who, when duty called, willingly put themselves in harm's way to defend the lives and liberty of others. And whereas on the day we honor our warriors for continuing to uphold and safeguard the very beliefs upon which this nation was founded, emulating our forefathers and continuing to carry on the values and traditions that were instilled through the generations, and whereas we are especially indebted to our fallen heroes and disabled veterans, defending the principles of democracy, individual freedom, and who have been bestowed the Purple Heart, the oldest military decoration initially created by George Washington in 1782 as the badge of military merit, and whereas on this day we remain forever grateful to our Gold Star families who have made this ultimate sacrifice, their lives have changed forever as they carry the legacy of their loved ones through their memories, continue to keep them in your prayers. Whereas freedom isn't free, our veterans know better than anyone or they've suffered the scars of war. Their sacrifices and hardship endure every day of every year. We must be ever mindful of those veterans struggling with mental health issues, addictions, and homelessness. Our duty as a compassionate nation must be proactive and work together to assist and guide them. And whereas on this day we must renew a commitment, we must demonstrate through our actions allowing our young Americans to grasp the importance of honor, respect, and our lasting gratitude for the valor and sacrifice of our veterans and warriors. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of North Reading, do hereby proclaim that Veterans Day shall be celebrated on this 11th day of November 2022 in the town of North Reading. We encourage you to continue to display the American flag with pride on your homes, offices, and town buildings to recognize the valor and sacrifices of our veterans and warriors through ceremony and prayer. And Mrs. Magner, if you wanted to say a few words, you may. Um, I just wanted to give um, accolades to my assistant, Catherine <coughs> McGlock, because she's the one that actually put that together for me. I was away. Um, oh, sorry. Because I was away um, on uh, for a family wedding. And um, she did a great job. I thought she did. And um, I just wanted to remind everybody who's out there listening um, that we've got a full venue for Veterans Day um, to include. We will be, um, uh, Senator Tower will, pre will be presenting um, the Mass Medal of Liberty Medal to um, uh, the Richardson family and um, their, her brother, um, Robert Richardson was killed in um, Korea in uh, 1951. So um, that, and then we're going to have a couple of stories that we're going to tell about the vet, you know, Purple Heart vets in lieu of um, have an actual guest speaker. Um, and then we're going to have the presentations of the pins to the families as well as to obviously the Purple Heart recipients as well. So I'm hoping that everybody's going to, you know, join us. We did get the National Guard with vehicles as well as the Marine Corps coming in. And um, I think everything's going well. And um, just a reminder to everybody also, the following week we have the dinner. Um, there's still tickets available. And that's on the 17th of November, Thursday, 17th of November, from 5 to 9 at Tuxbury Country Club. No charge for the dinner. Just give us a call. <laughs> Thank you. Commentary from our, our board. So once again, thank you for all that you do for the veterans, uh, Sue, and for your department. But uh, also, again, I just want to uh, reiterate the long overdue for the Purple Heart Community designation. Thank you again for spearheading that drive and getting it completed. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town uh, for the ceremonies, but I uh, appreciate you pulling it together again. Thank you. We're going to do a roll call of the ones that we have currently have that have actually come forward. Um, so we have 51 right now that we have that we've um, acknowledged so um, so I'm hoping that we have a good showing on Veterans Day weather's looking not too bad so oh. <laughs> we're not going to hold you accountable for that okay thank you <laughs> thank you again Mr. Walner. yeah no I mean you've done so many great things for the vets in town and uh, you know it's so appreciated um, you know historical in some way especially getting the wall here a few years ago which was great so thank you for all you do you're welcome appreciate it yeah, accolades to you. <coughs> um, you work so hard and do so much for our vets. And um, just, I, all I did was mention Purple Heart 
and the next thing you know, she was on it, and we became a Purple Heart community. So thank you. You're welcome. Much You're welcome. You. Um, there's one more um, thing that I'd like to uh, let everybody know, to the vets out there, that the uh, the moose, uh, I mean, excuse me, the Masons are going to be um, having a breakfast um, for the the general pop <coughs> population as well as um, they're going to have the veterans there and I will be there. Um, they asked me to come speak for them on sun. That's on Sunday. Uh, get my uh, Sunday the thirteenth of November. Um, at nine, I'll be there at nine thirty to give people information regarding uh, <coughs> state and federal assistance as well. Great. And, and so the ceremony on on the eleventh is at eleven. Eleven o'clock sharp. Okay. Always. <laughs> and uh, and what I'll add, I think, uh, Ms. Magna, I mentioned it last year, uh, but I think one of the most important lines in this proclamation is that making young people understand. Um, I think we've been fortunate enough in this country that we're a couple of generations removed from true warfare, as I would call it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think we see around the world that that can flip on a dime because mm -hmm. Ukraine was kind of the same. I'm not alluding that that could happen here so easily, but they were kind of fine for a while there. So, and uh, you had a whole generation that trial by fire learned that uh, anything can happen. So I think it is important that, um, you know, because I think respect for veterans brings respect for a lot of other things just in the course of, of that act. So, uh, you know, thank you again. I was there last year. I'm hoping to make it this year as well. I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It is a lot of work, it but it's it. it's definitely a so uh, no lot in the heart. <laughs> deeply appreciated. So you're welcome. You We're looking at probably about two sixty right now for the dinner. Great. And oh, I get three hundred tickets, great. so yeah. That's awesome. So that's good. Yeah. And just Gonzalez. Um. Oh, she was. Am I? All right. Okay. Move on. So, Mr. Parisi, the floor is yours again. All right. Thank you. All right. So, here we go. So an update um, on the wastewater system planning and design. <clears throat> so I want to uh, just review the municipal wastewater planning to date. So the town meeting appropriated $2,893 uh, in October 2021 to facilitate the preliminary design of the municipal wastewater project <clears throat> and conduct a municipal wastewater financial study. Since October 2021, uh, we've held multiple wastewater working group meetings to guide the progress of the project's preliminary design and the financial study. We briefed the select board on the results of the design and the study. We met with other boards and committees to present these results and get their feedback. We conducted public outreach meetings with the Butters to the sewer project. And, um, <clears throat> the sewer district and gathering comments and financial model being considered for the project. We had a number of outreach efforts conducted here and you can see on uh, September 16th, select board workshop presentation, September 28th, select board meeting presentation, October 4th, CPC and EDC, October 5th, finance committee, October 6th, board of health, October 11th, in-person community workshop, October 17th, presentation to the school board, and then later that evening, select board betterment decision point uh, <coughs> discussion. We had in-person resident about our workshop. Get that out of the way. We had um, in-person resident about a workshop, in-person business about a workshop, lunch presentation at the senior center, and a virtual community workshop. So what did we hear from our outreach? Well, we heard betterment connection costs and additional debt exclusion taxes are unaffordable for many residential homeowners. Betterment connection costs and additional debt exclusion taxes also unaffordable 
for many existing small businesses. That sewer privilege fees are too high and will limit new growth. The sewer project benefits the entire town, so the general fund should pay all or at least a greater portion of the project costs. Properties with functioning septic systems should not have to connect to sewer. Sewer shouldn't go down North Street and Lower Road. The area is not commercial. A portion betterment lien should be transferable to buyers of property so betterments can continue to be apportioned to the new property owners on the tax bill. <coughs> and there's a few more, I'm sure, but I think that gets a, a good, gives you a good idea of what, what the bigger issues were. So where do we go from here? I, I think it's you know, quite reasonable to say delay holding a special town meeting to allow more time to consider and incorporate feedback from the community. So we're going to be investigating other financial models for more affordable betterment. You know, consider having the general fund pay a greater portion of the project costs in order to, um, let's see what we've got here. <laughs> reduce, I guess that word would be. So reduce the amount of the project cost to be assessed as betterments and sewer privilege fees. Consider offering a residential opt-out of similar strategy that would not assess betterments to residential properties unless property owners choose to connect. <clears throat> More time to consider integrating other, fund under other funding sources to reduce the cost of the municipal wastewater system to the taxpayer and or butters to the sewer. Conduct additional outreach efforts on other financing models. So review new financing models with boards and committees. Utilize direct contact to reach engaged property owners using perhaps reverse 911 and mailings. Hold meetings with the butters of the municipal wastewater system. Hold community-wide meetings to discuss cost and benefit of the sewer system. <coughs> Proceed with final design of Route 114 section <coughs> of the wastewater main. So final design of this section of wastewater main was included in the October 2021 appropriation. So we do have that, that funding available. But uh, we will continue discussion with the GLS communities about final route to the GLS plant. <coughs> uh, there's pretty much the end of the uh, presentation, but there's um, you know, a number of things there that we think is the next steps. And uh, open that up to any questions. Thank you, Mr. Greasy. Uh, Mr. O'Leary, I'm going to skip you the, for this one being the first one, just because I know that you asked it. a lot. Mr. Walner, please, any questions from Mr. Greasy on this? Oh, uh, just uh, <coughs> timeline, because I know the state isn't going to leave this window open forever. What's the um, what's our timeline before the state kind of shuts us down? For the Mass DOT project area? Yeah. Yeah, whatever the yeah, so is. Yeah, so <coughs> we are looking at that. In fact, we just had a, uh, a recent update uh, from the um, for that project. We feel <coughs> that there may be a little bit more time than, than what we had, but we still want to go. Uh, on a timeline of uh, February 2023 to submit our design plans. I think that's our, our target date still. And that's for, can you clarify? That's that just for a small section of the Mass DOT project area to be uh, ready with uh, incorporating our design plans into their design plans. There's more design to be done for the entire project that will continue that's on after that. That's the connection spot. Yeah, but that is, that is, the, that is the point where you know we have to be, be ready to incorporate our design plans just for that section of the um, route to GLSD. Is that, uh, does that, does that run concurrent with these goals up here? Or is that, um, is that does this have to all be wrapped up before you get to that point? Well, th there are some points in time, I, th I think, that we will uh, feed whatever that is um, gathered from this process into design. But the design, I believe, can, can start. We have the funding for it, um, and we'll, Whatever information that's needed to complete it, we'll try to get that as soon as possible and feed that to the engineers. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no. Thank you. So just to be clear and piggyback on that, so there's the section that's being done over by the state, and they offered us to put our pipes down. Is that a separate... So yeah, so so, so there's, a pro there's a project that the state's undergoing in North Andover at the intersection of... Uh, 125 and 114, right. and they are pr 
preparing their own design plans to do uh, some improvements to that section, ultimately resurfacing that, that project area. Uh, but before that, there's two years of underground utility relocation uh -huh. to do. And so that's our window of opportunity okay. Okay. to get our pipes in the ground, if you will, okay. before they, <coughs> they pave it two years later. Right, okay. So, so there's time, there but time. the more important, well, there's you know, two issues. One is to get our bid docs in with their bid docs, we have to you know, keep designing. Right. You know? And then there's, you know, we have to you know, be ready with funding you know, so a little bit further out, a couple of years out or so. But obviously, we want to we want to be able to go, you know, to back to town meeting as soon as possible to get uh, a, a request for funding for the project if that's um, what it's chosen to be done. So yeah, I mean, just for the record, I think this is the right move. We got a, a lot of feedback from. <coughs> you know, the different workshops, and I think it's a good idea to take that all in and reconfigure and try to try to make people as happy as possible. Um, because, you know, it, I think it's a good idea. Mr. O'Leary? Yeah, just specific to the questions that my colleagues just asked in relation to the Mass DOT project, if you recall, last year we went to town meeting, what was driving the timeline was this Mass DOT mm -hmm. project. They were opening up uh, Route 114 right up by Merrimack College and that in order for us to participate in that timeline we had to get on board and right. we had to get prepared um, because if we don't if we go that literally that route uh, up through 114 125 to 114 once they close that road up our opportunity to get back into that roadway right. is like seven years plus so um, that's what was driving the whole timeline in relation to moving the project forward and trying to uh, <coughs> piggyback on, on that, uh, that project. So again, I would urge my, urge my colleagues to uh, endorse the, the proposal to proceed with the final design of 114, uh, which is due somewhere around the February, uh, March time frame. Uh, the money's already been appropriated and that was part of what we talked about last year. But at the same time, as we're talking about um, potentially we're, we're gonna hold a special town meeting uh, beginning of December, uh, based upon the feedback we have and some of the questions even internally amongst the uh, the working group uh, we need more time to work out a financial model that um, that makes makes good sense good financial sense um, the total project cost doesn't change you know we still need 130 million dollars it's just a question of how we're going to allocate it uh, based on the betterments and privilege fees and then um, how much of the general fund is going to going to absorb and we've had some significant amount of input we've <coughs> met with well over 400 people um, and again, we're, we were asking them to please share their thoughts, and they've been very generous with sharing their thoughts and their concerns, and uh, just want to let them know that you know, they were being heard. We've also uh, responded to uh, more than 80 emails uh, that was set up, we had set up uh, through our uh, web page uh, inquiries. Uh, we've had regular correspondence from people. Uh, so over a sh very short period of time, we've had a significant amount of outreach and input uh, I want to reassure people again you know that there have been no conclusions made in relation to the financing plan of this you know by this board we haven't considered uh, any specific plan yet uh, what's been proposed was put out by the working group at this point for purposes of discussion and we acknowledge um, that you know we want more input and we want uh, we want to get it right and we want to be fair and it's what's interesting is that you know, we've heard a significant amount uh, from people who are direct abutters who are going to be financially impacted uh, significantly by what the proposal uh, that's been presented to date would do. But conversely, we've also heard a significant amount of feedback from other people in the community who are not abutters, who would not be bettered, uh, who have almost uniformly been um, concern for those people who were going to be bettered and they they're concerned to the extent that they believe that you know there should be opt-out provisions uh, that the general <coughs> fund should be absorbing more of the costs so to share it across the community because the benefits of this project project uh, really are community-wide when it comes to um, new growth and uh, new tax revenues uh, so those are the things that we're looking for we do have 
Yes, we we do have we do have an opportunity now to to push off this special town meeting so long as we meet the deadlines with the uh, Route 114 uh, Mass DOT project. So uh, again, what are we looking at? My guess is probably spring town meeting, you know, with no specific dates to be committed, but you know March April timeline uh, associated with that. I think uh, we'd be ready to come back with uh, some proposals because there are some other um, timelines from in relation to going out to bid and other specifications that are required that we'd have to go back and see if we have the funding for it. So uh, I'd ask my colleagues to endorse the, the proposal as presented here in relation to postponing um, the special town meeting probably until the spring and again moving forward with the and proceeding with the final decision <coughs> of the run 114 section with Mass DOT. Okay. And what I will add is that um, uh, that between now and then, just like we did on that slide, you saw the outreach, there will be just as much before even the final financing kind of whatever it's going to be that we have to present the town meeting. And then there will also be, you know, just Q and A's on that. So uh, this to me was a blessing that we got more time because of all the feedback that we got. So to bring back something that is more palatable to everyone, not just a certain group, you know. So, but there'll be even more uh, outreach like we've done already, um, you know. And this is what we wanted exactly because, again, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty on the rollout of the initial plan, but also you got to start somewhere and present and then take it from there. There's really no other way to do it. I mean, there's no. I've never put together a financial plan that on the first shot. It's perfect. So, and and you almost have to guarantee that it's not going to be perfect. So, um, but I I also hope that by being able to delay this, as Mr. O'Leary mentioned, to the spring, that no one will feel that they will not be heard, or that no concern will not be addressed. Because I think that was a lot of the initial angst that, wow, we're we're steamrolling to this December fifth date, and did everybody get a chance to speak? And more importantly were we going to have an opportunity to amend the plan you know if we based on the feedback so um i do want to i i it seemed three of us but mr wallen are you in agreement with the pushback of endorsing the pushback of the date of course of yeah, course yeah, yeah, no yeah. i just want to yeah, yeah. i know yeah. you didn't say it straight out i just you know yeah yeah it no. seems like for something like this no ambiguity it's gonna, <laughs> i feel like saying is better so it gets a big uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors here, a lot that has to be weighed out. There's a lot of uh, variables. And I think the feedback has, I think the conclusions that you've put up there are pretty much right for it as well. And I think that, um, you know, it's back to the drawing board as far as like getting the numbers worked out. But I think at the end of the day, it's gonna, it's gonna be expensive no matter which way, but the, um, you know, how we allocate that pain and how we allocate those expenses, um, I think there can be, you know, a twist done to it to make it better and for our town you know, 20, 30 years down the line, this the payback will be huge, you know, and it'll be a forever thing because we're the only ones who doesn't have right. sewage in our main street. We're an island, and we need to connect when we can. So this is important for us to give everything we can to make it happen. Ms. Hobart? Uh, I have a question concerning the Mass DOT project. Um, <clears throat> it's being referred to as a small piece near Merrimack College. Um, how does that align with uh, what North Reading's current plan is to go to the uh, GLSD plant? In other words, my understanding was that our pipes would go way down 114, almost to Andover. Is that correct? It would uh, end up in uh, Lawrence. Okay, I know it's going to end up, but it has to go through. It, it, yeah, it would go from 28 right. to 125 to 114 right. to Lawrence. But my understanding was that it would be that the, the North Reading pipes, for lack of a better term, would go quite a ways down 114. Does, is the Mass DOT project going as far down 114, or is that a smaller project? It's a smaller project. It goes to Waverly. So I think, was it somewhat south of the 114, 125 exit? Uh, I mean, uh, intersection and then north to Waverly. 
And I also understand that there is not a particular financial advantage of doing this, only that if we want to take that route, um, in all likelihood, we would be unable to do it until five to seven years after Mass DOT's project is completed because they won't reopen the roads. No, the other financial advantages is if we go through Andover or piggyback through North Andover, there would be additional wheeling charges forever and a day from an operating standpoint. My but understanding was- But from a dollars was, and cents standpoint, any one of those three options is about the same amount of money to right. put the pipes in the ground. Right. But from, a, from an overall cost standpoint and from an overall operational standpoint, the most advantageous route is the route that MassDOT is providing access to. And uh, just just one thing, I will we will um, we will take some comments on this specifically. But like we mentioned, there's going to be this is not a public hearing. This was more of a board update. And actually, um, I see a lot of faces in the room of the meeting. So you, everything we just said, you probably know because well, we got it directly from you. We kind of plagiarized like what you like. We got the feedback. So um, like I said, it's. There's going to be many more. Tonight was just more of also an acknowledgement, not just more importantly because we had to update the board, but make sure that everyone was on board with moving the date because we needed more time, but also to acknowledge that all those emails didn't go to a black hole. Like we, all that feedback we've received at the sewer at North Reading, that, that was getting incorporated. So that, that's the other thing, that it was important we felt to let the, everyone know that all these comments are being taken seriously purposely. Um, so um, what I will do, I mean, Ms. I think what, just one, one other comment. I think it's important, again, to state, again, publicly, as we have at the meetings, you know, the board made a conscious decision to go out and seek public input at an earlier stage than maybe we normally would with other projects. But this is of such magnitude, we thought it was important to engage the public hear from people you know, before we presented any final uh, recommendation to the board as a whole to consider and then before the board takes any action to take it to town meeting. So there have been some concerns and, uh, expressed uh, to me publicly and privately you know, that you know, this is a done deal, you're hurrying this thing through and, and as I said the other night, you know, we're doing the mind wrestling very publicly here. Um, and we wanted the input and we're getting the input and we want some more. So and again, as we develop this plan a little further, we're going to be presenting it to the public again for more input. So for those of you that continue to, to follow us and, and continue to come to our meetings, we appreciate you taking the time to do so, and we, and we do want to hear from you. It's also important to recognize from a timing standpoint, we're talking about spring town meeting, but prior to that, doing this uh, 114 final design, but also many of the proposals that we're talking about putting into the plan will require special legislation. And deadlines for filing for special legislation and getting it through the legislature on a timely basis is going to be critical because town meeting action will be contingent upon the special legislation being approved. So um, we want to keep the timeline moving. I want to keep it going forward, but we want the input and we want to make sure that you know whatever is presented, uh, people understand the rationale behind the proposal, and then you can make an informed decision. So. Um we will take a couple of questions that regarding the concerns. If it's project specific, that will be uh, a question that is more appropriate for a future public hearing when we also revise the plan. I would appreciate if you save it then because if it's too specific, I'm just going to ask to move on. I, I would just suggest that we, since we're asking the board to just consider uh, postponing the, the special town meeting date that you keep the comments related to the special town meeting date and um, proceeding with the design plan of 114. The rest of it is yeah. old news at this point. So that, that would be my suggestion, Mr. Chair. I think the board needs to hear from the public tonight as to whether or not uh, considering postponing the special town meeting date should be done. Fair enough, Mr. Chair. You can yell too if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amy DeChara, 24 Fieldcrest Terrace. First, I want to thank the board for listening to everybody. I think this is very stressful on a lot of the residents, and I get that it's stressful on you as well. Um, one, two things that I want to ask. First, in the future, I believe it's been discussed. Um, we do an abutter, you do an abutters list, and you notify all abutters, if not a full town-wide mailing to let everybody know about all these meetings because there were many residents that were not aware of these public hearings or these informational sessions. <coughs> um, and then secondly, there's a lot of conversations that have gone on from some of our elected officials that have told people that they think that, that people don't want change in North Reading. And I don't think the opposition to this project had anything to do with change. I think it had to do with the cost of the project and the str financial stress that it's gonna put on people. I've lived in town my whole life. I'm not afraid of change, and I know many people are not, but the cost of this project was just outrageous. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm at 402 Park Street. Um, I haven't heard any any um, discussion, and maybe there has been, I just haven't heard it, about uh, issuing municipal bonds. Is that a possibility? That's how that's how it would. They, they would be borrowing. Borrowing. That's how it would be yeah. borrowed through those. Yes. Oh, so even if you got the 46,000, you still would have to go and issue bonds. Well, the project is split where the. Let's say in a perfect world, there was a, you know, everybody opted in. I'm just, again, there's a hypothetical. I'm just trying to get, you know, don't, okay, don't throw the tomatoes yet. <laughs> all that would do, if everyone paid it all at once, all that would do was take care of the portion that was allocated towards the abutters. The general fund would still, we don't have enough. <laughs> to pay it, so we would have to borrow for that. So yeah, so that would be, we have to borrow one way or the other. Even if all the abutters paid, if we stuck to the original plan and everybody cut us a check on day one, we'd still have to borrow. I believe so. Okay. And I have one, one more question, and this is uh, based on this young lady c c comments. Um, this is an, an ad that was posted in the uh, North Reading transcript, and it's about the upcoming coming, coming meetings. So I, I don't know if there was a, an error or with a printer or, or, or something, but I, I can't read it, and I challenge anyone here to to read any line underneath there. Uh, you could say Mary had a little. I think that's the I economic development you. committee meeting at the Hillview but, that's uh, been canceled. Would you, would you just take it, and so I, I think there has to be a um, a um, certain standard of typeface, <clears throat> and um, I don't know, maybe it's put in a certain part of the paper because. Uh, I couldn't read it, and you know, a couple of meetings ago, I wouldn't have known about that if somebody didn't put a flyer in, in my mailbox. And so, so I, I think, I think uh, fairness to, to everybody. If they don't have time; they they can't show up. That's their problem. But everyone should have a um, have a um, have, have a uh, opportunity, a, a good opportunity to to come to the meetings. I think it's very important. As a matter of fact, it, it kind of looks like you don't want to tell somebody about it because it's such a bad idea. We don't want that. You know, you don't want to want to that either. You know, you represent the you represent the town. You represent the project. You know, from your standpoint, you're you're being split uh, three different ways. But townspeople are split one way. It's it's what concerns me and my family. I'm concerned about my neighbor, but I have to be concerned about. About, about me first, you know. I'm retired. My wife's retired. We're on a fixed income, and that's a. Right now, it's a it's a big item. And so, anyway, thank you for allowing me to speak. To Gilberto. So, Mr. Leary is correct. So the the ad that the gentleman's referring to was for an economic development committee event scheduled to take place on Wednesday at the Hillview in the evening. Yeah. That event has been postponed to a date that will be determined after. The work that was described here that needs to take place regarding the financing has taken place after it's been reviewed with the select board. Uh, it'll be a much later point in time. Um, 
likely closer to whenever a special town meeting date is identified. Um, and sir, your comments are well received. Uh, I received very similar feedback from Maureen Doherty, the transcript, who told me last week that you know there was an issue with regard to the way that played out, and we'll make sure that the future ads yeah. are, are much more legible. Also, let me add on that one. That one wasn't specific to, that was going to definitely be a topic of discussion, but the EDC also does have other right. business that, you know, so meaning that those ads are pretty standard. I mean, that they're, they're, whenever there's a meeting coming up the, or an event, that is publicized, but point well taken. Yeah, I, I just mean, didn't want you to think it was just. You talk about, about people having agita, what's going on, <laughs> that just adds to it, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. Any? I agree. I saw the ad and it went, not good. <laughs> Hard to read. Yeah. If, you're, if your daughter's getting married, there would be a bigger ad, bigger right? Hopefully. But. <laughs> not for a few years. Sir? So I heard from the select board, you know, um, nothing but great. You need a mic. Can you just wait a second for a mic? I've heard from the select board nothing but great things. Uh, talking about uh, All right, so Sonny, just your name and address. Please. Oh, Sonny Campagna, 37 Spruce Road. Thank you. So you guys talked about you know we're going to spend 130 million dollars and you know all of a sudden we're going to boom. Uh, my question is, do we have any commitments from any businesses, hotels, or anyone regarding this project to date? We don't have any, but it's not. You're not going to get a what if. I mean, I can't go to. I'm just in general. I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm trying to answer that. No, we do not. But it's something where there's so many what-if projects that municipalities work on that it's it just hard. However, I can tell you from past um, from past experiences with other maybe projects through the Community Planning Commission that we do have developers that have straight out told us that without sewer. You either pick up the three million dollar wastewater plant fee for us, or we ain't coming in. So we do have that. Just to give you an idea that we do, though, have developers saying that we're not even going to give you the what if unless you commit to paying to covering our biggest expense for water. So that that I can say. And I can also tell you that based upon the outreach that we've done to date, I've had at least three property owners uh, whom I have not spoken to before approach me, and again. During part of the presentation, we talked about being eligible for uh, state and federal monies. Uh, part of that requirement to get it would be to partner with private developers. I've had three people approach me already, expressing interest if we can get this thing moving forward. So there's so again, there's more chatter there. But when you say developers, are you talking? I'm talking houses, about houses, apartments. Are you talking business? I didn't get into the specifics with them, other than they said. Because of our presentation, we said that in order to get grant money, we need to partner with people because that would render us eligible for more funding. They came forward saying, when you get to the point you want to speak to us, cause we want to sit down and we want to talk with you. So that hasn't, I haven't seen that happen uh, in a long time. To Mr. Studo's point, over the years, I've spoken to a lot of property owners and developers saying without the sewerage there isn't much that we can do here so that's I mean that's been the uh, can talk to the Planning Commission you know it's like we have an awful lot of opportunities here if only for the fact that we had some sewerage so no we haven't signed on with anybody because we haven't got anything to sign on for you know but what we have right now is we have status quo and we know what we're getting for input and um, <coughs> interest which is not an awful lot uh, and we've seen little or no development in the last 25 years because of the lack of sewerage so as we stated before this is an opportunity that the town needs to consider and to decide whether or not we want to take advantage of it that's all and we're doing our due diligence here we're, we're listening um, Again, you gave us $2.9 million to get it to a point where we could actually quantify what is it going to cost us. Now we're going to find, find out how can we finance it and who's going to pay what portion of it. Uh, and then the community can decide. But at least at that point, the town will have made a conscious decision to either move forward or push the pause button again. But again, in all the years I've been involved, we have never, ever been this close to having an opportunity to tie into sewage. So 
we think it's, a, it's our obligation to bring it forward. Last year we made the pitch. You gave us the money to do the due diligence. We're doing it. We'll bring it forward. And town meeting will make a determination. And then if town meeting decides yes, then the general electorate as a whole, if we have to go for an override vote, will determine whether or not we move forward. Uh, so that's a long answer to no, we haven't married anybody, you know, and nobody's banging the door down other than I have spoken personally to three different property owners who are willing to partner with us to consider some development out there, which will give us some new growth. Sir, do you have a follow-up? No, I'll save it. Okay. Um, one, one second. Um, Mr. Hayden, I don't want to pick on you, but I think it'd be a nice roundup. Just uh, Mr. Hayden is uh, vice chair. Of, you have re-elected vice chair, right? Chair. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Wow. I got I to gotta get out of sore. I got to do other things. Right. <laughs> um, like Chris, why'd you grab the mic? So here's uh, Mr. <laughs> Penn is the chair of the Community Planning Commission, which I was liaison to and <clears throat> for two years. And I saw that, you know, they, there was a lot of great ideas that ended all the same way. So I, if you can speak to that question a little, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. So over the years, we've had several large companies. Um, there was some uh, national brand restaurants that were interested in coming into North Reading. And they were ready to go and do all their due diligence and do special permits and everything else. And then they asked, they went to the water department looking for the sewer department. We don't have a sewer department because we don't have sewer. And that was the last time we heard from them. There, you know, and there's other things. We, we've looked at a, a, a larger, we had a, uh, a study done looking at putting in a, a $3 million mini plant that would take care of waste. And uh, what, what would we put there? And the, the folks that did that work for us came back and said, you could put businesses there what you gotta also put there is residents because you don't have enough, there's not enough residents in this town to support a lot of business on Main Street, okay? Um, the other thing is, is if, you, if you go up and down Main Street, there hasn't been a lot of, a lot of changes. Um, and one of the biggest problems is, is that there's small lots and there's a lot of wetlands in those areas and right now it's all septic and the land can't handle septic for those areas um, so they not a lot of the uh, property owners change anything they just stay the way they are they make some small changes but not a not anything really large what we're hoping and the planning board has looked at this we've we, we, we've known about this for a while um, and we support it um, because it's going to help Main Street. You know, you, you could also go to, say, Concord Street, and you look out there, and there's, uh, there's a large retaining pond on Concord Street. And behind that, it's all parking lot and a couple large buildings. Well, the parking lot is there because there's septic under that parking lot. You bring in sewer, you tie these guys in, there's another building that's going to go out there. They don't need the parking for parking. They needed that area for septic, not, not for anything else. Um, so they, they just asphalted it, and they can put, you know, vehicles can park on it because they, you know, they spent a little bit more money at the time to, to make it so that you could travel across it. So there's a lot of opportunity with getting real sewer in down Main Street, up Concord Street. Um, I guess we were looking at North Street also, um, and that was going to be to tie in the, um, maybe tie in the multifamily areas that we have, Edgewood and the Pulte Homes yeah. um, area there. They were, if, if it was done, if we had sewer a long time ago, they wouldn't have had to spend a lot of money to put in their own treatment plant. And they'd rather not have to take care of their treatment plants They'd rather put it in the ground and let it go somewhere else and, and pay that instead of having their own. They have to have their own folks in that treatment plant taking care of it every day. If it fails, they have to fix it right away. It's, 
it's, it's not like you can't wait a week or a month or whatever. It's got to be done. So there's a lot of cost for them. They, that's one of the reasons why we were looking at or that it was being looked at to go down North Street, just to go down and to tie that in. And then we, there's some other property down there that could be uh, maybe turned into some commercial property while they're down. Thank Hello. you. Sir. Yeah. Ralph Samard, 90 Park Street, North Reading. Um, I guess one of my concerns is, and I understand what you said in one of the previous meetings, Mr. Studo, is about dollars and cents tax revenue and things like that. Um, where I think that you're losing a lot, and maybe it's just I, I don't understand it. I'm looking for the growth that the town's potentially looking to take in. I think that needs to be really keyed upon and, and hit on. You know, like this gentleman just said, you know, if it's a commercial restaurant, let's let's find out about getting some of these if they're willing to make commitments. If we did have that, the concern that I, a lot of people that I talk to and different friends have is really that the overburden that it's going to put on the town. Uh, if you drive up and down 28, I understand Conquer Street has buildings, but those are viable businesses that people run. They employ people. They might not bring in the potential huge dolls and cents, which, you know, that we're being told about, but, but, the, but their business is there. You go down 28, and there's a lot of smaller businesses, and like the gentleman said, they're smaller lots. Um, you know, that people have dog grooming facilities there and a veterinary and, you know, little convenience stores and the thing for the kids' birthday parties. <clears throat> what, what my biggest concern is, is if we get this sewer going through here, they're going to wipe out all those small mom and pop places. They're going to put condos in there and we're going to tax this town, the, the, the <clears throat> maintenance for the, for the roads, the DPW, the school department, the fire, police to the extent that we can't even fathom. Because we know, like he said, you're gonna take a small lot that you might only be able to put a condo of 20 units there. You get sewer in there, you're gonna put 150 units in there. And the taxation burden that it's gonna put on all of our amenities here in town is just gonna be overwhelming. If it was strictly business, I think you'd have a much better chance of getting some more people on but with just this open-endedness <clears throat> that's that's what's really hurting and confusing and scaring a lot of people i think just something else to maybe think about and uh, ralph your last name was again samard ralph samard so um i'll speak a little bit and then i can pass it on so uh, just a couple things um <clears throat> first first your comment um i would love to get see if we build it will you come my fear is too many people will give the yes, and then when I can't deliver, I get called, what happened? Because that's just reality. Yep. Um, also, the taxation thing, is a, it, it's a real thing, okay? However, here's what I'll say. From the New Hampshire border to Boston, we're the only ones without it. So that's a fact. We can take a ride down my car tomorrow. I'm willing to do it. We're the only ones without sewer. So there's got to be a reason the community after community at great expense copied each other, right? There's got to be a reason for that. And none of these communities went broke, not one of them. We can go all the way down. We can go 28 from New Hampshire all the way down to Boston, and all of them have increased tax revenue from sewer. That's, you know, so again, I'm not saying that North Reading I'm not saying that sewer couldn't just be a bust, because anything could be. However, there's enough data from enough communities, some that were like North Reading, some that were nowhere near like North Reading, somewhere in between. So that's what kind of I look at. Besides the, to your point, we do have a study that got us a lot of information, which we've, I think you've seen bits and pieces, we've tried to get it out. You're talking more very specific. I can't speak to what will happen to existing businesses. I don't know that. Um, I know, like Mr. O'Leary, that what's been out there for public consumption and what a property owner would do if I offered you double is a very different answer in private. I'm just being real honest, right? Because that's that's the thing. I know that you don't want to you don't want to upset your neighbor, but like the gentleman said there, if it's good for my family, sorry, neighbor, right? That's just the truth. Yep. So I just I just want to put that out there, just like in reverse. Maybe somebody tells me to my face. 
I think this is a great idea, and then they go home, they're like, ha, Studo's never getting my vote. Fine. So I, that's what I'd like you to look at, and we're going to present more, but I want to more focus at the same point. If sewer wasn't that great, why is North Reading the only one that doesn't have it? Only one. Only on 28, though, but that's it. But that, but excuse me. I, it, excuse me. No, no, they're not on 28. No, we're saying between Route 28 and New Hampshire border. Whoa, 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 that's not 28. Okay. Cities. But what all what all due respect, and again, we can't turn into that kind of because that's more for the public hearings. But I can show you pictures of what Reading looked like 25 years ago and what 38 in Wilmington did. Yeah, there were cows on it. So, but that's what I'm just saying. But I, that's a fact. The fact is, though, that these were more. But, but if you, as Mr. Kara mentioned earlier, I thought we, I thought it wasn't the change people didn't want. No, because people like change, it's, but they like to keep the change in their pocket because you. you <laughs> That's can't a different change. Right. <laughs> I gotta write that one down. That was good. I that know. was good. That so, was good. But thank you, Mr. Kumar. I'll Am I hired. Yeah. <laughs> um, just just to kind of make sure we go apples to apples here. Um, Middleton, nothing. Linfield, nothing. They have marketplace in Linfield on septic. It's not on sewer. But again, it's not on specifically. Sewer. But you heard me say 28. Not everywhere, right? Or oh, did we miss that? But they built that on a golf course. Yeah. And not, it's not they built it on open land on a golf course. They took half the golf course yeah, they and did. built Marketplace and had the area available for septic. And that, that's the size of a Marketplace. And we we're not talking about that. a Marketplace. That was all privately funded, 5%. We'll take. Uh, I'll take the. We can take the next question. I just. Uh, oh, hold on, name. I just want to check and see if somebody else on uh, the Zoom. Sorry, before I go second round. Thank you. We uh, we had 62 at the at the, the high number. Now we're at like 52. Is there any questions? I'm not like? seeing any hands raised at the moment. I'm going to ask Mr. Parisi if you could stop the share so I could get a better sense of the screen here. While we wait for that, Mr. Carroll, please. Can you just verify or explain the approval process? Because there's a lot of confusion around that. Originally, we were told it was going to go to town meeting. Uh, if it didn't pass, there wouldn't be a vote. Then at another meeting, it was said that you could, or I was told I, without a meeting, but then I asked at the meeting that I was told that it could go to town meeting, fail, and still go to a vote. And then I was told that at a lunch meeting that it was said it could go to vote before it even goes to town meeting. So there's a lot of confusion around that, and I think it needs to good, be explained. Good question. So when the town meeting happens, which will not be December 5th at this point, right. when it does happen, right, whatever the final product looks like, there's a vote. If two-thirds of the town approves it, that's step one. If that happens, the second vote then is a town-wide vote for the debt exclusion, because that's how we have to pay for it. And that's a simple majority, um, correct me if I'm wrong, where that's where we get the money for what already was approved a month before or however when it happened. So that's, just to clarify, so 
Uh, maybe I think where some of the confusion might have been is that between now and then, when the working committee brings back all this feedback and comes up with the grand plan, and the board then uh, approves it through different decision points, whatever those points may be, those will be more board related. But again, the board voting on anything that they think it's a good idea to present doesn't get it anywhere. Whatever, I'm just throwing a number. Let's say it's March 7th. I don't even know what March 7th is. But let's say that's the day of the town meeting. If we don't get two thirds on whatever plan gets put forward, that's it. Sorry. Just a two thirds of the town or two thirds of the, of the, of the actual the, two, of the vote. Oh, vote if, at if town I could, meeting. If I could just help confuse the issue. I mean, Mass, <laughs> no, Mass General Law allows for a two-step process, you know, which is a town meeting vote, which because the bonding is involved, requires a two-thirds vote, and then an override vote, which is just a simple majority of those people going out to vote, residents out voting. Mass General Law allows it to go in either order. The board could choose to go to the ballot first and town meeting second. You know, we, we could do that. We could go to town meeting first and then the ballot second. And it, if we go to town meeting first, it has to be within 90 days of the town meeting action for approval. So Mass General Law allows the town the flexibility from the order in which it takes it. I haven't spoken to my colleagues, but in all the years I've been here, we've never put forth a, an override vote without a town meeting vote first. Because again, we want to get a consensus built throughout the community in support of whatever it be, whether it be a new school or whether it be you know, this type of a project that requires an override. So we generally go to town meeting first and then schedule the um, special election vote afterwards. So. And I understand that that's how it's always been done, but in some of the questions that have been asked, that's not how it's been answered. One time it was answered, it will go to town meeting first, then it will go to a vote if it passes, and then another time it was answered, I have notes, I can tell you the dates, it was answered that it could go to, it will, could, will go to town meeting, it could go, if it fails, it could still go to a paper ballot, right. and then if it passes at the paper ballot, it has to go back to town meeting. It would have to go back to so town meeting. there's been multiple ways so that question is answered, and that's why there's a little bit of concern. I understand, and depending upon the action at town meeting, and again, I believe it would be the consensus of the board to commit to going to a town meeting first, the key would be when are we going to set the special election date. If we set the special election date before town meeting action, then the special election would be set. So regardless of what town meeting does, favorable or unfavorable, you would still have an election. So that could happen. And we've done that in the, the, for schools. You know, we've had special town meeting and a special election very quickly, very uh, right afterwards. Um, so that could happen. But again, if that were, to, were the case, and again, I don't know what the time is gonna be between the special town meeting and the special election. Um, or the override election. Again, it could even be simultaneous with the, with the town election. You know, we could decide that too. Um, I can't predict what that's going to be. I don't know yet. But if town meeting would vote no, and a special election were already scheduled, we would have it. And if the special election said yes, then we'd have to go back to town meeting again. Nothing gets done unless both steps are positive. Nothing gets step. No, no, no dollar is spent. Not a dollar is appropriated unless you have both steps being in the affirmative. So whichever order takes it in. But I think for clarity purposes, it's the intention of the board, go to town meeting first. And, and again, be my recommendation, uh, anyway. Mr. Kyle, sorry if that was confused over, this is kind of what happens to when you have way too many meetings back to back to back and it's kind of, you're trying to answer a hundred, you're just trying to get to everyone, right? So, um, but, um, but, to me, the moral of the story is that one way or the other, if this goes through, it's because a lot of people wanted it to. That's just like most big projects, right? And then, I mean, and if it doesn't go through, it's because a lot of people didn't want it to go through. So, and actually, it's the other way around because you don't need as many people to kill the vote, for lack of a better word. So if you do get the vote and you get the yes, it, it, it is. So, but sorry about any confusion. No, no, no. Town meeting of those registered voters present and voting. A, an override vote. 
Oh, I'm sorry. There's no town quorum. Uh, if there's special, if there's a special town meeting, it's 150 people, which I don't think there'd be a problem. Yeah, I think we'll get those. <laughs> getting, the, getting, getting the attendance. So, so special town meetings, 150 people, and it's those present and voting, and there's no absentee voting or anything like that. The ballot question, that's different. You can vote absentee. Do you consider the the forty-six thousand dollars a tax? What do you? We're excuse me. Uh, we're, we're not going to. That's a that's a that's a specific question to that's like we said in the beginning. No, we're going to do that at the public hearing okay, though, then, because then if then we I open that Pandora's another, box, another we'll. Question. Um, I don't think you can succeed with this unless you get get the people who are not abutters to to vote. Am, am I correct in assuming that? Um, I, I, that's I, a well, little. Let's just assume. Let's just let's just say that's true for the moment. Um, the non-abutters aren't going to pay a thing. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. No, she, under the under the under the proposal that you've seen, it's about fifty percent, forty-eight percent, paid by everybody. I've never seen everybody heard anyone talk about that. Everybody. Yeah. It, it, there was, we, we tried to make it very clear, but oh, tax we had, increase. Yeah, everyone's going to get six hundred seventy dollars taxes. So, so where do you think? Yeah, that, that yeah, but I'm just talking about the the upfront, the the investment, the upfront investment, which is there's no one's told us what the ROI is except maybe there's going to be a, a, a hotel downtown, but um, in case my wife throws me out of the house or something, <laughs> you'll have a room. Yeah. <laughs> The the um, right or who are who knows the the uh, um, uh, so uh, what I'm saying is th these these abutters are 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 good neighbors um, who could be concerned about us but it's not coming out of the pocket so it comes down to almost like no uh, taxation without representation you know they're not being hit the same way so I don't know why they would even be allowed to vote. We can have them vote for that, for that uh, annual tax. But this is, the, I, that's, that's not something, I mean, we didn't just write up this rule yesterday. I mean, that's just been in the books and that's how it is. I mean, so yes, to answer your question plainly, because I, I know what you're saying, that it's, it's a fairness issue, but yes, if. Yeah, but I want to be fair. You know, everything in this world today, you know, oh, people what are trans this and everything else. I'm trans money. I, I, understand, I understand, sir, what you mean. But to answer your question very clearly, yes, if, if the part of the town that is not abutting showed up and they all showed up, there would be many more than two-thirds vote. Can, can we have a motion to say two-thirds vote, you have everyone vote, but there has to be, there has to be 50 percent of the abutters agree to it as well? No, we. That's not how state law is written. That's yeah. how open town we meeting is operated. Rule. We don't make those rules. No, it's those present and voting at town meeting. So again, we have twelve thousand registered voters. Yeah. Twelve thousand registered voters. I don't know where we we'll put them. If they show up, we'll be out in the football field again. <laughs> uh, well, no, but twelve thousand registered voters who are eligible to come and participate at open town meeting and are eligible to vote at a ballot box. Now, well, well, what is so, our next? Have you ever come up with with a? with a solution for what the ROI is for the, for the abutters? It, it did. It varies based upon the u current use of the property. And again, as we stated earlier, specifically, you know, one of the uh, condominium projects, if $35,000 based upon the assessed valuation is a 17.5% use of their equity. So the ROI on that is upside down, right? How are they going to recoup that? You do it some on another piece of commercial property, you know, where the potential for, for growth and uh, redevelopment is substantial, the ROI is substantial, you know. So it varies from property to property, and we recognize that the people who are uh, most impacted are residential property owners, the condominium owners, the single-family homeowners along the route. Right now, that's 90% of the water users in the district. So what we're looking at in this financing plan is how can it be more equitable and fair so that the return on investment for the, what we're asking the abutters to, to put up is fair and makes sense. I concur that we need to go back to the drawing board on this financing issue to make sure that that happens, and that's exactly what we're doing. And that's why we're not having a special town meeting on December 5th. 
because it needs to be done and, and it needs at, to be fair. And, and, it, and the people on the other side of town that you're most concerned about now are expressing the same concerns. Can you look at? Uh, okay, hold on, I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry but interest. just to, excuse me one second. Just to be fair, we said no, product, uh, no project specific as those are coming in the hearings and it's unfair to everyone else who's avoided them. So it, it's a good question, but again, today it was about if you have any comments on the date change or if we miss one of the concerns we talk about the last month. I mean, not anything, ROI is a very, very specific question. So like I just, again, for, if somebody else has held owner. theirs. It's different for each property owner. It is, but I just, it, if, if there's nothing else on the specific of what we were. Mr. For, Chair, I see a hand up there, Kate R. Yeah, R. I was gonna go to Kate R, but are, were you done with, uh, nothing specific, I, I, I'm again. Tongue finish. Um, um, Kate R. And she's unmuted, I believe. Hello. <laughs> I want to get everything out before I get Alzheimer's. Kate R, can you hear us? Unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Um, maybe we, uh, well, we can. Is there audio coming through the owl, too? Maybe we'll try, uh, and then we can go back to uh, Kate R. Uh, Justine's iPhone. Hi, thank Hi. you. I just have a Your name, please, uh, ma'am. Justine. No, and address. full name and address, please. Justine, 378R3. Yeah. Thank you. You had mentioned that we only have till about February to hook up to yeah. the 114 connection. Is that correct? No, what that is that. The, that is the project uh, design that was already authorized. Yeah, we um, the, the February yeah. date. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, the, the February date is the timeline that we have to comply with the Mass DOT's uh, project engineers to have our design plan incorporated into theirs. We have to have it to them so that they can incorporate it into theirs. And then the bid package is going. So that, that's what the February date it, It's nothing, there's no pipes going in the ground here. This is just uh, oh. our drawings have to be submitted to the state by that date so that they can include them in their drawings. I understand. So you could pull it back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's going to happen is, well, what, what, the, back. right, what, what's going to happen is, is if we move forward and the town meeting doesn't approve it, or we decide to go another route, um, right. again, the bid packages as it's going to go out with, through the state, it'll be mm -hmm. separate bids for the North Reading portion of it. So we can pull it back, we can change it, that sort of thing. So it's, it's not going to be, we just want to make sure we have room in the road, and it's incorporated into it, and then when it's bid separately uh, through the state contract, it's like a bid, op a bid option. So yeah, it can be pulled back at any time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Justine. Uh, Kate R. Hi. Hello, luck. <laughs> Kate R., unfortunately we can't hear you. Maybe put the question in the chat. Yeah, that's <laughs> maybe. Uh... Doesn't the chat isn't showing up in here? Let's see if I can find it. Well, why don't we go to uh, Mr. Champoli, Champolilos? Excuse me. It's a good guess. <laughs> uh, my name is Michael Champolilo. I'm one of the abutters. Um, currently on North Street. Um, so this is just in regards to some of the latest information I've seen. So obviously I didn't really find out most of the important information regarding this proposal until after the abutter workshop took place. I don't think I ever even received a prior mail notification. So our, I mean, is it, I know that that was one of the initiatives that would be brought up going forward that most of this would be mailed out to all the residents. And I think I can speak for a majority of the abutters that were also not made aware of this. I'm not sure how the turnout was for the two prior workshops, but are all future notifications about town meetings or anything regarding the sewer project going to be mailed out going forward so everybody has full awareness of what's going on? Mr. Gilberto, Mr. can you? Yeah, Mr. Champalillo, uh, Michael Gilberto, town administrator. So. Um, first and foremost, for the town meeting itself, where the project would be uh, 
pending approval by the voters at a two-third vote. The warrant or the agenda for that meeting is mailed to every residence in North Reading uh, at least 14 days prior to the meeting. Um, that notice generally also includes information about a warrant article hearing that the select board generally holds a week or two before the town meeting. So that would be another way you'd be notified. And then the commitment that Mr. Parisi had identified in the presentation earlier was that for abutter meetings that we would issue notices to the abutters with regard to um, that meeting as well. Okay, that, that notice the abutters is not to talk right? No, because the, the project is not ready for that meeting and that meeting has not been scheduled. Also, okay. also, also I, mean, I, I mean, I can speak for many, many of the abutters in the business, people like you said, in terms of ROI and uh, having to dig into your home equity, obviously, the current proposal for the Batman fee isn't the best option. I'm just, I'm curious, was that reviewed by you selectmen before this was proposed? Did anybody think that this wouldn't be the best idea to charge this much money towards the residents? Or is it something you just threw at us and wanted us to bite the ball and give you an opinion back? Yeah, no, the uh, the subcommittee took a look at the, the proposals along with our consultants, uh, we have two or three different consultants working with us uh, based upon how other communities have handled installing new sewerage projects, not, not extensions and not, uh, not existing sewer systems, um, you know, where people would just tie in. Uh, so we, we made the determination to put this model together for presentation to the board and the public um, for consideration and to stimulate input. And so uh, we've succeeded <laughs> It's stimulating the input. Um, in the meantime, as we looked at uh, the nuances of, those propo of the proposal that was put forth for consideration, uh, some of us even on the um, subcommittee uh, raise concerns in relation to the dollar amounts associated with some of the specific property owners and the uh, hardships that it would cause and again the return on investment um, as we've stated publicly before in these other meetings specifically um, there won't be a change of use we can't foresee any change of use for condominium owners uh, property owners going forward right uh, but redevelopment of other commercial spaces and maybe some of the uh, um, single family homes along the route, but not all of them, um, have a potential for, you know, changing use. But the majority, again, of the property owners who are condominium owners and single family homes is of concern to us. And it's a fairness issue. And uh, that's why we're looking at it. And that's why we're postponing the date. And we're going to uh, come back with a better plan. And. Uh Mr. Jampalila, what I would recommend too is, I don't know if you've done it, but <clears throat> the best, uh, if you're signed on for like reverse 911s or that uh, more text messages or email from the town, I think you go to northreading.gov. That's- Yeah, I have the email notification that's, but, right now. All right, but that, that's how, before I was on the board, whenever I got info, like I, I just got lucky. My, my wife, when we first moved here, just signed us up and that's how I got the info, but so I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. That's the that's what I'm trying to say. So on it. So I think uh, maybe we thought too many people were signed on. So, but thank you for the feedback. Um, I'll move on to uh, Carolyn Gattuso. Gattuso. You're muted, Miss Gattuso. Can you hear us? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, I, I don't have much of a question here. It's actually not a question at all, but Name and a address. few minutes ago, there was a comment made about taxation and it equated taxing with the rights of trans folks. And I just wanted to express my disappointment in the board that no one acknowledged that that happened and I just, that's not acceptable to me and okay. I, not acceptable to the community. Thank you. Um, Mr. Caroline, uh, point is well taken. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Uh, Mr. Austin, Adam Austin, please give your name and address. You're muted, Mr. Austin. While we wait for Mr. Austin to hopefully fix his audio, we can do another question here before we can just move on. Any, Mr. Sonny, I forgot your last name. I'm sorry. Uh, the number of actual bodies. The number of tax bills. I have a two five question. Oh, I'm sorry. There was a 300 and. Mr. Austin, we'll get right back to you, okay? Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have a number of residential butters and, and uh, commercial butters, and Do we have that majority number? would be residential. The specific numbers, I'd have to search some files uh, at Can the moment. Can you ask the second part without the specific number? Yeah, my other question goes right to the board. I want to know if any of you guys are butters, and if you have family, family that are also butters uh, of this project. No. Mr. O'Leary? I am not a director butter. I have a... Um, brother who owns property on Route 28. Mr. Walner. My wife has a condo on 28, and I will be in a butter because on Martin's Pond, okay. that'll be the second phase, so it'll go right in front of my house. If Gonzalez. I'm not a, an a butter, but I work for a business that is a business of butter. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Mr. Austin. Yeah, sorry about that. That's no, no, that's fine. Uh, your address, please, and your name. Yeah, Adam Austin, 14 Main Street, Park Colony, board member. Um, just wondering, with this delay of the vote from December 6th, how is that going to impact the delivery date on the client feather report? On the client feather report, is that what you said, Mr. Austin? Yes, yeah, that's correct. Um, it, it probably would because, again, as we pointed out to you before, the board has to make some policy decisions before Kleinfelder can complete their report. And those policy decisions will be delayed. And the reason they'll be delayed um, is because of the feedback, right? Because if you reincorporate and readjust based on the feedback and try to come up with something different, the report's going to spit out something very different. So. Uh, yeah, so that, I mean, that's a long, a long-winded answer. Did that answer your question, Mr. Austin? Yeah, that was basically that. Are they still on the hook? They recrunch the numbers with what you, what, uh, you know, what would get the community input? Correct. Um, there was no Thank one. You. Thank you. There was no one else here. I know we had Bob. I don't know what happened to Bob, but um, any other questions, Mr. So Chef? Like you do when it's licensing time? No. Okay, I'm just asking. Yeah, no, no, not from my understanding. Has the town, I, I know Mr. O'Leary mentioned earlier, different phases. Um, you know, that's one of the things that's concerned right now with Route 114. Um, has the town looked at maybe keeping this in town with maybe a smaller treatment plant for the 28 in the Concord Street area? The, um, Mr. Hayden. Oh, sorry. We have looked at that. One of the issues is once you treat the water, you have to dispose of it. So that would go through a leaching field or <coughs> leaching wells. And we don't have enough room in town, town-owned land, um, to do that efficiently. Would you like to add for that? Or was that okay? No, that's, that's a, a, absolutely correct. Look at that. You can see a wastewater treatment plant right beyond the high school. There are another one that's going to see the parking lot in the field. Ma'am? It's Pothia. Shri Pothia, 236 North Street. Hi. <laughs> um, does the Finance Committee, have they approved this? 
No, the finance committee hasn't. Uh, There's nothing to approve yet. Yeah. The do board hasn't presented. Well, do they support it? I mean, to have. The, the board hasn't presented yeah. a proposal yet. Hasn't gotten that far. But the chair is here. Abby Hurlbut, chairman of the finance committee. Uh, the Finance Committee has discussed the project. We have the same kinds of concerns that many of the residents have. Um, we have been waiting to find out uh, where it was going to go, what the Board of Selectmen were going to do versus opt out, what it was going to do to the tax rate, and from the Finance Committee's standpoint, more importantly, what it would do to uh, our bonding capacity and our, our ability to go forward with other infrastructure projects. So as yet, the Finance Committee has not taken a stance. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, it's uh, one way or the other, yes or no, everyone's going to know everything about SOAR to tell the story later on. So that's the good part. Um, I appreciate everybody's time. Um, it's uh, bear with us. Uh, that's the best I can say. We, I, I hope, uh, I hope everyone appreciates that. I mean, as you can see, no concern was too small to blow off. None. Every every single one was taken into account. Meaning that uh, whether this is destined for a yes or no, but it's going to be with a lot of feedback behind it and then it just comes down to how people want to vote right I mean at the end of the day that's kind of it is what it is like I mean people are going to decide what they want at town meeting no matter what they even thought that morning it seems like these days so um, but again we are going to have a lot more there's guarantees that you are going to see each other even more because I'm sure that when we come up with the next great idea we're going to get a lot of feedback of why it's not a great idea or maybe better but not best so um, thank you again, and uh, I, I mean, if anybody wants to stick around for, what are we talking about next? Uh, oh, public comment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody public comment? Not about sewer, hopefully. <laughs> okay, if there's no, no one that wants to say anything else. Um, wait, do, where? No, nope, I don't okay. see anything. Okay, then we'll move on. We, um, okay. so yeah. the appointments. Did we do the appointment? No, we, we did, did the, the appointment. appointment. We did the meeting. Board member reports. We'll do that together with old and new business. Mr. O'Leary, uh, you want to tell anybody what we talked about today? <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked about wastewater. Uh, and um, let's see. I think we're all set. Go to health, we're all set. The only thing uh, under all the new business, I want to congratulate the high school football team. Yeah. I want to congratulate the girls' soccer team for moving forward to the tournament. I don't know how the girls made out. They were playing this evening. I hope they won. Um, but fantastic. Uh, a great fall sports season. And congratulations to all the participants and the parents. Great. And um, my understanding that uh, if Mr. Studo wins the Powerball, he's going to pay for the sewerage project. So I. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank Only you. if I get a statue somewhere. There you go. <laughs> we'll give you a statue right next to the package treatment plant. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, we're all set. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The girls won? Girls won. Ah, congratulations to the girls' soccer team. Mr. Waller? Won. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Gonzalez? Um, we touched on it earlier, but I'll just go over it again for um, Veterans Day on the 11th at 11 o'clock at the Common. Um, we will be not only recognizing Veterans Day, but also that we have become a Purple Heart community and there will be Purple Heart recipients. Um, so every, anybody who can join us there, that would be great. And then on the 17th, uh, Veterans Dinner at the Tewksbury Country Club at five o'clock, dinner is free. Um, it's a fantastic event and anybody is welcome, just contact the veterans office and let them know you'd like to come and um, I'll just add tomorrow is uh, voting day so I'd like to thank in okay. advance all our uh, I know the you know, the polls are open I think the full uh, 12 hour shift tomorrow correct yes. when the poll is 7 it 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. 7 <coughs> so thir uh, 13 13 so I appreciate because it's uh, you know I see the same group of people and it's nice that they do it because it's like, I mean, it's not exactly the most. 
So, um, but other than that. Oh, I have one more thing. Ms. Gonzalez has one more thing. I just want to reiterate that there was going to be a um, EDC meeting, um, get together at the Hillview Country Club Wednesday night that was going to talk up about SOAR also. That has been canceled. Um, and the reason is what we discussed tonight. We're not there yet. We didn't feel like it was the right time to have it. Um, so it will be rescheduled for when we are ready to do it. So um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Yep. Vice Chair, I move to adjourn. I'll second that. Motion by Mr. O'Leary. Excuse me. Mr. Again, all my motion by Mr. Walner, second by <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.